Today we examine a case that deals with contracts in the modern world of technology, an internet contract. Many of you use web-based services such as Google, Facebook, or apps on your phone, uh, uh, like Uber or Seamless. Do you remember the last time you read through the terms and conditions of any of those service contracts? Have you wondered why some services require you to separately click a button to accept the terms and conditions, whereas others do not? These issues are raised in Sprecht versus Netscape, a 2002 case that was heard by the Second Circuit. The decision was authored by Judge uh, Sotomayor, who, as you know, is now a Supreme Court Justice. Before we turn to the case, let's take a moment to learn a few key uh, concepts. Click wrap refers to an electronic agreement in which a user indicates agreement to terms by clicking on a radio button, checking a box or the like, usually as a condition of using a device or a piece of software. Browse wrap refers to terms of use often found via a link or a website's main page that purport to bind a user solely by virtue of his or her continued use of the site. These terms come from uh, the use of, quote, shrink wrap contracts, which were frequently litigated in the 1990s. Shrink wrap contracts were commonly used in boxed software packages, which contain a notice that by, on the outside of the box, that by tearing open the shrink wrap, the user was assenting to the software terms enclosed within. In the Sprecht case, the plaintiff appellees downloaded defendant Netscape's smart download program. This was a program which facilitated transmission of files online. Underneath the download button, in a non-obvious position, was a link to the terms associated with the download and use of the smart download uh, software. An arbitration clause was included among those terms. The smart download program allowed Netscape to record any subsequent downloads obtained by smart download users. Plaintiffs claimed that this feature violated federal privacy laws. Netscape moved to compel arbitration in accordance with the terms associated with the smart download uh, uh, terms and conditions, as well as Netscape Communicator and associated program. The plaintiffs argued that arbitration would not be appropriate because they hadn't agreed to it. In other words, plaintiffs argued that the arbitration clause hidden underneath the download button was not enforceable. The district court denied the defendant's motion to compel arbitration. The instant court affirmed the district court's ruling. The main issue in the case, as you can already tell, is whether the plaintiffs are bound by the terms of a download program if they could have reasonably downloaded the program without becoming aware of the existence of the terms. In other words, the main issue is whether the kind of browse wrap agreements at is, uh, uh, in this case are enforceable. The Second Circuit sided with the plaintiffs. They ruled that an offeree must receive clear notice of a contract's associated terms if a download is to constitute acceptance of those terms. A contract requires mutual assent because plaintiffs did not assent to the contractual terms and could not be expected to be aware of the term's existence. They are not bound by the arbitration clause. So what law did the court apply to this transaction where the subject matter is a license of intangible software? The court's answer here is the common law. When pressed, some courts might apply the UCC by analogy to supplement the common law. However, remember the, that the UCC Article 2 only applies to the sale of goods. Something else that might apply is the Uniform Computer Information Transactions Act, UCTA. The Model Act was designed to govern computer information transactions. Section 103A of that act uh, uh, has defined computer information and information in electronic form which is obtained from or through the use of a computer or which is in a form capable of being processed by a computer. Section 112A would have dealt with click wrap and browse wrap 
stating that a person manifests dissent if she intentionally authenticates the term or engages in behavior that is likely to be perceived as manifesting assent. But only two states, Virginia and Maryland, have enacted UCEDA, and the project has been abandoned by the National Conference of Commissioners after several states enacted legislation prohibiting UCEDA from regulating transaction within their borders. The American Law Institute adopted principles of the law of software contracts in 2009, but it remains to be seen how influential these principles will have, uh, how much impact they'll have on judicial opinions. However, this doesn't mean that browse wrap agreements are never okay. The court held that browse wrap agreements may be enforced if the browsing user assents to it. This is going to be done on a case-by-case -case basis and there are no bright line rules. But the key is that a given agreement must be sufficiently conspicuous. What are some ways to make a browse wrap agreement highly visible? Well, some suggest that the icon for the terms of the user agreement can be placed in the upper left-hand quadrant of the home page. Because internet pages open from the upper left-hand quadrant, this guarantees that the user will be able to see the icon. Think back to the last time you used Google, not Gmail or Google Chat or some other Google service, but Google the search engine. Did you remember accepting the terms and conditions for Google search? Google search terms and conditions are on the bottom right-hand corner of its page, and as you can guess, it's usually a browse wrap because you don't have to click on any button to accept it. Usage of the service means you're agreeing to the conditions. Let's turn back to the click wrap agreements for a second. There is a little question that click wrap agreements, there, there's little question that click wrap agreements are presumptively enforceable. Courts have held that a click is usually enough to satisfy agreement to an electronic transaction. But both cognitive theory and empirical studies demonstrate that this might not be such a good thing. Professor Robert Hillman and Jeffrey Werklinski argue that while an individual's opportunity to protect herself against one-sided standard form contracts is ar arguably greater when ca contracting by computer than when contracting through written forms, the cognitive perspective that consumers tend to adopt with respect to contractual risks makes it unlikely that many will take advantage of these new electronic tools. In short, Almost no one reads the terms of the click wrap license before assenting to the program. In a study of 47,000 households over a one month period, the readership of end user license agreements is, was found to be on the order of 0.1 to uh, 1%. Maybe this explains how the British software retailer GameStation was able to successfully add an immortal soul clause to its end user license agreement, which stated that the user would give up his or her immortal soul at the seller's request. Making matters worse, consumers sometimes demonstrate something that might be called term optimism. The consumer sometimes believes that the contractual terms are more favorable to them than they actually are. For instance, in a survey of consumers uh, concerning insurance, the consumers believed that they had more coverage from different types of harm than the insurance actually offered. So the consumer attributes more utility to the insurance contract than the contract actually uh, generates for her. Some websites require users to actually click through and even scroll through to the bottom of the terms before they're able to agree to accept the offer. A few websites even require the term box to be open for a certain amount of time before the offer becomes acceptable uh, to assure that the consumer had enough time to actually read the terms. But the vast majority of websites uh, make it so that the consumer offeree uh, uh, doesn't have to read. Uh, and, it's, and it's possible, of course, that the consumer offerees don't want the hassle of these extra clicks or these extra precautionary devices. They prefer a bug-me-not approach to contract formation. 
even if it leads to the problem of term optimism. Now, Section 211 of the Restatement of Contracts, uh, which is sometimes referred to as the Know Thy Customer provision, might provide a little bit of consumer protection against this uh, term optimism. Section 211 states, if the other party has reason to believe that the other party manifesting such assent would not do so, if he knew that the writing contained this term, then that term is not a binding part of the agreement. A comment to the section notes that customers do not, in fact, ordinarily understand or even read the standard terms. They trust the good faith of the party using the form. Although customers typically adhere to standardized agreements, it doesn't make sense to bind them to unknown terms which are beyond the range of reasonable expectations. For instance, this comment says, a debtor who delivers a check to his creditor with the amount blank does not authorize an infinite figure. Uh, we're not giving the sellers blank checks when we click through on these contracts. Professor Alan Schwartz and I have proposed another solution in an article which we published in the Stanford Law Review. We suggested that sellers should be required to disclose a standardized warning box containing unexpected, unfavorable terms. And this is actually an example of such a box as applied to Facebook. But we also suggested that representative consumers should be empowered to waive the uh, provision of some of these terms. If it turns out that a majority of consumers would prefer not to be warned, then the seller would be able to forego uh, providing this warning box of unexpected terms. We suggested that this would together create a kind of form democratization where customers would have the power to both be warned about unexpected terms and the power to waive those terms if representative consumers would prefer not to be bugged by them. If the representative consumers find these to be unhelpful, then they uh, wouldn't have to see them. In our paper, we actually tested 25 core questions about Facebook terms concerning privacy, uh, statement of rights, and responsibility, and we were trying to see which terms are the terms that people would expect and which terms are unexpected and, and unfavorable. We found five unexpected, unfavorable terms, and this slide shows you t the two that were most unexpected and unfavorable, and we pr provide the kind of examples that we were trying to uh, disclose to consumers. So, uh, today we have examined click wrap and browse wrap contracts. We learned that while click wrap uh, agreements are usually enforceable, browse wrap agreements are not enforceable unless they are sufficiently visible. However, consumers rarely read uh, click wrap terms or the terms in a browse wrap uh, agreement either. A better option might be to ensure that sellers disclose terms that are unexpected and unfavorable or a piece of software. Browse wrap refers to terms of use often found via a link or a website's main page that purport to bind a user solely by virtue of his or her continued use of the site. Sprecht versus Netscape, a 2002 case that was heard by the Second Circuit. The decision was authored by Judge uh, Sotomayor, who, as you know, is now a Supreme Court Justice. Before we turn to the case, today we examine a case that deals with contracts in the modern world of technology, an internet contract. Many of you use web-based services such as Google, Facebook, or apps on your phone, uh, uh, like Uber or Seamless. Let's take a moment to learn a few key uh, concepts. Click wrap refers to an electronic agreement in which a user indicates agreement to terms by clicking on a radio button, checking a box or the like, usually as a condition of using a device. Do you remember the last time you read through the terms and conditions of any of those service contracts? Have you wondered why some services require you to separately click a button to accept the terms and conditions, whereas others do not? 
These issues are raised in 